President Aiken, thank you, faculty, administration, any trustees who may be here, other students, friends, family, and above all, you esteemed graduates. To put it in the most formal of grammatical truths, you done good, you done <laughs> real good. I, graduates, got into a Twitter conversation with one of you. I am not going to share which one that was, and if you try to look on my Twitter history, it's a DM, so you won't be able to find this person. But we got into a conversation, one of you graduates, the reason I don't mention the name of this graduate is because it is a good possibility his diploma may be recalled if this event <laughs> is attached to him, which has eliminated all the female graduates. And this particular graduate, I was trying to be nice. I was trying to uh, say something that may be encouraging to him upon the time of his graduation. And so I said, what can I say on graduation morning to best encourage you? To which you responded, I really don't care what you say, just be brief. And so... <laughs> I will try to satisfy that, dear sir, in more ways than one. The psalmist writes in Psalm 39, 5, You indeed have made my days short in length, and my life span as nothing in your sight. Yes, every mortal man is only a vapor. The psalmist was not writing that out of some sense of fatality, fatalism. The psalmist was not writing this because of one who had not hope. The psalmist was writing this because, quite frankly, graduates, that this is a matter of fact. Now, you may think at this point in your graduation that uh, it has taken a long time to get where you are. You may think that whether it is the MDiv or the MA or the DMIN or the PhD or whatever degree has been conferred or will be conferred, that it was a long and arduous process. But it won't be long before you'll see that it's but a vapor, the blink of an eye, and you'll realize how quickly this time has passed. Think about 10 years. Where were you 10 years ago? What were you doing at that point? My graduate was a high school senior. I can remember Jess lying on a couch after a football game playing his heart out with all extremities going in multiple directions, watching him watch, much to my consternation, HGTV. <laughs> now, now, for the uninitiated home and garden television, I don't mean to slam that particular network, it's just I know little about it, and I know that a high school football senior watching HGTV was not something that was normative. So I passed him a second time, and still lying on the couch, he's watching HGTV. And then a third time, still on the network. And I asked the obvious question, Jess William Rayner, why are you watching HGTV? To which he responded with an incredulous look on his face, cause the remote is broken. <laughs> I said, son, when I was your age, I used to walk barefoot through the shag carpet. <laughs> and I would go turn those channels with my hand, all the power in my muscle. Get up and get moving, boy. <laughs> you graduates have been at Southeastern Seminary over these years long enough to know that you did not come here to remain still. As a matter of fact, while you were here, you did not remain still. Matthew 28 and the other great commission passages were a part of the ethos of everything that you did. And now you're going to another place of ministry, to another field that is widened to harvest, to another mission place that can't even be articulated for fear of your safety. You're going to local churches, some of them struggling 
some of them growing. You're going to places of Christian ministry. You're going. But as you go, go with that great commission. And go with the awareness, graduates, that life is but a vapor. And you don't have much time. And before you know it, there will be but the blink of an eye. And it will be over. Many of you in this graduating class are millennials. You're part of the largest generation in America's history. Those born between 1980 and 2000. You're one of the 80 million. But hear this well. For those of you who are part of that generation or even those who are not. Of that 80 million, by our best estimates, we think only 15% of you are Christians in America. You are the largest generation in America's history, but you are the smallest Christian generation in America's history. But you come to this place and you leave, not with despair, because you are few, relatively few in number. You come to this place with great hope that he who began a ministry with only a handful and then an upper room turned it into a Pentecostal explosion and the Greek or Roman Empire that day knew the power of the gospel as the world will know the power of the gospel through you. It only takes but a few who are totally sold out to the great commission of Jesus Christ. What is it that we know about this generation? Those who are Christian and non-Christian, we know multiple things. For example, we know that you don't put up with business as usual. You will not go into a church that just does things the way they've always done it because that's the way they should do it. You will go into a church and you will be determined that that church become a great commission church. You will not stand complacent. And while you will love those who serve under your servant leadership, at the same time you will lead strongly. Many of you will go to the mission field beyond this nation. You'll go to cultures that heretofore you have not known or you only know briefly. And they will be waiting because God has prepared the harvest in many ways for you to come. Ladies and gentlemen of the graduating class, life is only a vapor. Don't take business as usual. We also know that your class and your generation is highly relational. The social media is just one symptom of how you connect with others. But as you are relational, be relational in a great commission sense. And learn to love with that agape love that loves unconditionally. For you will encounter resistant people. You will encounter difficult church members. You'll have times when you wonder if it's worth it all. But you have been called by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your generation is impatient. Make it a holy impatience. Make it one where you know that this life is so brief, you indeed have made my day short in length. And my lifespan is nothing in your eyes. Yes, every mortal man, every mortal woman, is a vapor. And those of you in this graduating class, be determined in the power of God, for the glory of God, to make a difference. This life will go so quickly. Ten years, it was ten years ago, that 18 year old that was too lazy to turn a television, went to college, found a wife, did exactly what I did, outmarried himself. <laughs> Celebrated in the birth of three children. Grieved in the death of one. And the life was so, so incredibly brief. It'll be the blink of an eye, graduates. It'll be a time where you'll look back and you'll say, where did this time go? And the words of the psalmist, like any other word of scripture and the inerrant infallible word will prove once again inerrant, in 
infallible. And you will know that this life is but a vapor. The challenge is not to have a sense of fatalism about the brevity of life. But to have a sense of determination in the power of the gospel to do something in the short time that you have. To make a difference. To carry the gospel wherever you go. Please hear me clearly. For there is no presumption in this message. There is no presumption that those of you who are here know the most important thing that can happen in this life is for you to meet this Savior, this Jesus Christ, where he will be your Savior. The Bible is very clear. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I am a sinner. You are a sinner. Our relationship with God has been broken because a perfect God cannot stand in the presence of anyone who has any sin in their life, and we have all sinned, and that is the bad news. The bad news continues in Romans 6, 23, that the wage of sin is death, eternal death, a separation from God. But then the good news. Continuing in the... Sixth chapter of Romans, the 23rd verse. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The good news is this, ladies and gentlemen, for anyone here, you do not have to leave this place fretting about the vapor-like life that you are living, but rejoicing in the eternal life you can receive. That gospel is available to all. Paul would further write in the gospel in, in the book of Romans in chapter 5 verse 8, God demonstrates his love for that it, while we were yet sinners Christ died for us. There's the good news ladies and gentlemen, the crucifixion, the cross was not some abstract theory or a well played movie. The cross was because Jesus took the punishment for you and for me. The cross was that our sins could be put upon him that we might have eternal life. And who can have that eternal life? Paul continues in Romans, whoever will call upon the name of Jesus will be saved. Life is a vapor. You graduates, get ready to see what God is going to do through you. Life is a vapor, but eternity is eternal. And for those who have repented of sin, turned away from sin, and placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, they have that hope. And a life that is a vapor becomes a life of promise and a life of hope. Congratulations, graduates. You done good. You done real good. Congratulations, spouses. You got a standing ovation. We parents got a mere hand clap. <laughs> Deservedly so. Congratulations, families. This is a significant marker in your lives as it is in the lives of the graduates. Congratul congratulations to all of you. But it is my prayer above all that you graduates will go with the determination to make a difference for the gospel wherever you go in this vaporous life and that no one will leave here without knowing the power of the gospel in his or her life. Would you join me in prayer? If there is anyone here who has any doubt about his or her salvation, I pray that right now that not because there's a formulaic prayer, not because there's a magical incantation, but if this is the prayer of your heart that you might receive Christ. If you're out there and you have any uncertainty as you hear these words, God 
gladly hears this prayer. Lord, I am a sinner. Lord, I have sinned against you. And I deserve an eternity of hell separated from you. But Lord, I want to accept Jesus because he died for me. He went to that cross. And so, Lord, I want to put my trust and my faith in him and him alone, the one who died, who rose from the dead, who conquered death and conquered sin. Dear Lord, I want to accept you as my Savior. Those who have called upon the name of the Lord with a heart of sincerity have been heard. And even though this graduating moment is a moment to celebrate what these graduates have done, we celebrate, oh Father, the greatest celebration for those who've come to know you as Lord and Savior. And now, Lord, thank you for these men and women. These who have made a difference and will make a difference. Send them, Lord, in the power of the gospel that when it's all said and done, we will say that this graduating class in May 2013 at Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary turned the world upside down in the power of the gospel in the name of Jesus. We pray it all. Amen.